RRP uh, is a county program um, here in Butte County. Um, we live in Chico, California, and Butte County um, has an RRP program. Um, ROP is funded through the state of California, but unfortunately ROP, that division and that name is actually going away as we speak. Um, and the money that comes with ROP is going away, but there's different funding and different grants that are coming in. So ROP I had for about seven years um, here, and um, now it's under CTE. CTE is Career Technical Education. So my class is the same, but it's a different name and different funding. Um, but um, basically the emphasis of CTE and RRP programs is to train and provide kids with skills as they learn in their education. Um, many of our students are great at academics and studying and performing well on tests, but um, a lot of them have no skill set. And so um, CTE and RRP are focused on technical skills. Um, it could be welding, it could be culinary arts, um, and mine is media arts. And so we want to provide more skills here in high school so kids find what they want earlier um, in their careers and then hopefully go on to higher education and choose a major in media arts and continue on and then hopefully end up getting um, you know, a career in that field um, after they graduate. So that's why I asked my advanced students today who are graduating this week which ones we're going to do post-secondary education, which ones want to do a career, and more and more kids raise their hand and say, yes, this is what I want to do, I'm passionate about what I do, I love what I'm doing, and they develop some pretty strong skills along the way. Um, we have a couple courses at middle school or junior high school. So that is 7th uh, and 8th graders, 12-year-olds, uh, 13-year-olds. Um, basic classes, basic computer fundamentals, um, basic video, basic photography, but just to get them um, excited about it. And um, then the idea is they, they find that in junior high school, and then hopefully they sign up for my pathway in my courses when they enter high school. And then now my um, courses here, I have a four-year pathway. So they can start in ninth grade with an intro class, which is one semester for beginning kids. And then they can go all the way up through video production three. That's my top film and video kids. Um, so four years of experience potentially that they can be in that. Um, well, I started this program here probably about 2007. Um, so about 10 years, um, I started with one class, uh, just a video production class, and for a few years the kids were really excited about that, a lot of kids signing up. Um, back then we just had basic camcorders, that's it, one little camcorder, um, and it's evolved into you know a series of four, four classes now. So I've been at it for 10 years um, here at this school, and every school is different. Um, across town at the other high school in my city, um, Chico High School, they don't have this program there. They have more digital arts, um, design, layout, but they don't do the production like we do here with the audio and the video. So it's school site to school site, city to city, state to state for whether they have this or not because it's a very expensive program. As you know, the gear, the cameras, the editing software is all very expensive. and. Um, that's why the grants um, through the state are very important. That's how I got this new facility built. Um, but again, I've been trying to get something like that to happen in years. Expense, the cost of cameras, lenses, computer hardware, computer software, accessories, I mean, uh, everything has changed so fast, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's tough to be able to afford that type of technology. So uh, this is public education here at my school and without the grants from the state and the CTE grants, I wouldn't be able to have uh, any of this. Um, so uh, funding, um, funding is always, is always very difficult. Also for me, managing all that equipment, because now I, I'm checking out 
you know, uh, 30 cameras a day to students, tripods, cameras, microphones, you know, all kinds of stuff. And so constantly having to check in, check out equipment, make sure it's okay, make sure it's not broken, uh, no lost batteries, lens caps. That's very difficult for me to keep up with. And then um, just keeping students motivated. Um, a lot of students want to procrastinate and wait, wait till the end and try to rush their project and get it in on time instead of spending the, the larger amount of time to make it really good. Um, so that's always a struggle in high school is keeping kids on task, motivated, working the whole time. So if I give them two weeks to do a project, you know, it needs to take two weeks, not two days to do it. So that's, that's always a struggle. It's just time management and keeping kids motivated. It's an elective. It's yeah, elective. so it's an elective. So kids have to have their math, history, English, and all that, the academics, but then they have um, elective spots in their schedule. And so that's where all the electives at this school try to get those kids. And so it's very competitive. It's very difficult. Um, so um, kids have to enjoy your class. Kids have to sign up for it. If kids don't sign up, if there's not enough in your class, they cancel the class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, it's year to year to year. You have to make sure kids are coming into your program. A little bit stressful. Yeah, we also have a strong welding program here at my school. Uh, we have a strong culinary arts um, program for chefs. We have uh, architecture and CAD design and we have a sports medicine mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it, it depends school to school. Some of them have a lot of media classes, technology, CTE, some have nothing. Um, they do want more kids to get in these classes, so they're, there's not a graduation requirement, but they are giving more incentives for kids to, to come into a program and complete a program in four years of high school. So everything's just changing right now. So there's a lot of new things that can happen. It just really depends on you know the leadership, the government, the Board of Education, the local education, the principal, you know, a lot of people involved. So you gotta you gotta make sure you make people happy. You gotta make sure your students are highly productive and doing high quality work. And you gotta make sure that you make your program and your kids an important part of your school and community, um, so that um, people see see the quality of the work that they're doing. Yeah, it's both. I mean, the majority of kids here, um, we have about 1,800 kids here. Uh, in my media arts program, I probably have 30, um, about 150. So, you know, almost 2,000 at the whole school and 150 for me. So there's a lot of choices here, which is good, but it's also hard for programs to, to get kids in there. So. It's not across the board. Um, I wish it was every student had media arts, every student had the fundamental classes, the soft skills, the basic skills, and then they choose the higher ups. But right now it's not like that. Well, in my class, um, all year long, they have to collaborate with other students. So every project they have, they have at least one partner and sometimes small groups, one, two, three, four. So they have to um, develop their own skills, find out what they're good at. Some are better at filming with a camera. Some are better at editing. Some are better at writing the script. Some are better with coming up with the stories. So I have my students do all of the pre-production um, for media arts and then they try to find what they're good at, and then they try to collaborate with another student who has skills that are stronger in the areas that they're not. So they're constantly doing teamwork. They have to compromise their ideas, listen to their partner, work together as a team. 
Um, what I do differently here than most is I give mine a lot more opportunities outside of school. So they use my equipment um, after school on weekends, they check it out. Um, and so I let them have a lot more access. Uh, some of the other programs around the state of California, they only do it here in the class period and it's very limited. You, you need much more time and so, so I try to give my kids more real world projects where they're doing things for others and meaningful purposes. And, um, and a lot of times they're learning all the soft skills and the basic things you're talking about. They're learning that, but they don't even know they're learning it because they're just doing it. So they're doing it and they're working together to produce these um, projects. But in that simple project, they've learned how to communicate, how to, how to um, listen to somebody else's idea how to plan um, and organize their time um, and it's just it's wonderful to see them go from point A to point B where they sometimes they struggle sometimes they get frustrated sometimes they get mad at their partner sometimes they argue uh, different ideas but it's very real world because you know you have to work through those problems and I think they learn a lot about themselves personally who they are as a person what they can bring to the table um, and um, yeah eventually they work it all out and it, it's fun to see them grow in the, the years and turn into a mature young adult and and uh, leap with this new skill set <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a group of four. So um, every group of four critiques another group mm -hmm. of four, and then I get the students' four pieces of um, feedback and mine, mm -hmm. and I combine all those scores for the top films of the year. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we have to keep track of that now through the, the grants. We have to tell them where the students are going next, and we kind of have to keep track of them for a couple of years, two years after high school. My program, uh, you know, is still fairly new, um, and so only in the last four or five years have I seen kids going through um, and graduating with a higher education, a four-year degree, university degree. So I don't have a lot of results yet from that because it's only been four or five years, but more and more are, are leaving high school and want to do that in higher education. So I think it's at the point where I'm starting to see a lot of them, like Stephen, who owns his own company and people that are traveling, and I see them post all their work on YouTube. Um, I have uh, another kid, Ryan, who's filming in Costa Rica right now. Um, he was in um, Iceland um, a few months ago. He was in North Dakota for the big, um, the big uh, controversies that were happening there this year. And I see my students getting involved in very meaningful projects at a higher level. And I think it's about ready to turn the corner where I see more of them actually employed in the field. And then they, they contact me through Facebook or YouTube or uh, and they, they share their work and they talk to me about that. So I don't have a lot of data yet, but I think more is going to be coming soon, hopefully. Okay. But um, it's up to them. It's, you know, it's a difficult field, you know, so they have to be really motivated and determined to want to do this because um, you can't do it partially. You have to do it full, you know, very dedicated to what you're going to try to accomplish. Thank you. Yeah, it's great for you to come over here and visit.